Can you guess what this might be? Can you guess? Could you even guess what season it is? <laughs> uh huh. Yes. You've heard of a trick or treat bag. This has no tricks, only treats. And that's what we're going to share. We're coming up on the season where one of the words that is used is the word remember. And I'm going to share with you right now three things that are important for you to remember. So I'm opening up the treat bag. <clears throat> I had to get a little kickback from Nino's on this. <laughs> for the church, of course. <laughs> for the church. That chocolate they slip into my pocket, that's, you know. I would like you to listen to these words, the first remembrance. Listen to my voice. This is God speaking. He says, then I will be your God, you will be your people. Thank you, my brother. Angels come from everywhere. So he said, listen to my voice, and I will be your God, you will be my people. Do you have any idea how many times that appears in the Bible? Say, no, Father. Okay. Would you like me to tell you? Oh, you're so good today. <laughs> Even though I don't see you very often, you got this so down. I'm so spoiled. Now, that appears... 43 times. Now, over the years when they were collecting these books and the insights that are there in the books, of course, the persons did not hear it as much. But in the generations when the books were made and shared, the information and the ability to remember it got out there more and more. But I must say that in my time as a priest, people do not remember this phrase very well. So that's why I chose it, told you how many times it's in the Bible and why it is that we're talking about this. Because <clears throat> it is important not only for us to remember this, but that it seeps deep down within our life because it makes a difference. What God is saying to each one of us personally is this, you are my daughter, you are my son. I love you and I come to you only with love. And if I correct you, and we'll talk about that in a minute, if I correct you, it's only out of love. Why do I say that? because I believe still in our midst are people who have spirituality in which there is fear of God. And I'll tell you why I think that. When things occur that are not good or mistakes are made, often parishioners will absent themselves from church. And that's exactly the opposite that needs to happen. He says, I am your God. You are my people. He doesn't say, you're only my people when you don't make any mistakes. He knows what he has. He knows who we are. There should never be a time when you are afraid to walk through those doors, no matter what has occurred in your life. We've got to get this straight. This is an important thing to remember. Have you all heard this? You back there still sleeping? Have you heard what I said? Very important. First thing to remember. Now the second thing, 
and it correlates to this. Listen to this sentence. The Lord, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity. That's the God we're talking about. And he's so slow to anger, we wouldn't even recognize it. There's another phrase that goes along with this, which says, the Lord has no need to remember the things we have not done right. There's no need for him to do that. When he sees that a person is working at correcting him or herself, all that goes to the background that's forgotten. And I, you've heard me use this phrase before. When you drive your car, there's this enormous windshield. That's your life. It's ahead of you. Your rear view mirror, very, very small. Because you look back only when necessary. Your life is ahead of you. And that's what Jesus teaches us. I will correct what is wrong right here. And now he tells us, admit, admit it. And he's not surprised by the mistakes, nor is he taken back. He simply loves. He simply loves. So the second remembrance. The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity. Now the third remembrance. This comes to us from James, a section of the scripture, the letters that are not often used. But this is what James shares with us. Be doers of the word, not hearers, only deluding yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a person who looks at his own face in the mirror. He sees himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he looked at. But the one who peers into perfecting the law of freedom per perseveres. And he's not a hearer who forgets the word of God. Such one shall be blessed in what he does. The point, we are to listen to these words today, the three remembrances that I shared with you. The fact that he purposely chose us, that he's a God who is always willing to hear us, and because of that, we take that word and we allow it to affect our everyday lives. Now I want to show you something. You can't eat it. What do you think this is? A mirror. How surprised you were. You thought it was chocolate. Uh huh. And that's what it talks about. <clears throat> I want to refer back to a story that I told in this church when I was a missionary. The people that I lived with, I used to take photographs of them. And they would come to the house and I would give them the photographs. They would take a look at them and they couldn't recognize themselves. You know why? They had no mirrors. The water was always brackish, so it wasn't clear. So they didn't know what they looked like. They didn't look in the mirror in the morning. Now, this is a side note. When I look in the mirror in the morning, <clears throat> I learn the phrase, it is what it is. <laughs> With or without my glasses, it is what it is. All right. <clears throat> now, 
I can understand you might want to forget that, but I want to go on with this metaphor to help you out a little bit. The third important remembrance is I cannot just hear this, I must be a doer. And I can't be like when I look in the mirror and then forget, forget it. No, I look in the mirror sincerely, just like I had to do this morning, because I knew I would be here to see you. And I want to do my very best to share with you so that you can strengthen your ability to be a doer. Why is that important? It makes this word come alive. Because I want to tell you what I hear in the news, and you have heard it also. People have been angry and upset because of COVID, because of a whole myriad of things. And what happens is that we've lost a certain amount of kindness. And what happens to us as families, that often we will forget the people who are close to us and will often be unkind and we don't say we're sorry and we don't let it go. Part of the doer of the word is a person who knows what kindness is. And when he or she is not in the right space, you're honest about it. It's like being honest about it is what it is. Some days in your life are not great. But the Lord teaches us not to take that out on other people. We are to be purveyors of that word. Now, you've heard this old phrase, and I'm going to correct it for you. You're not feeling very good. So one of the phrases is, fake it till you make it. Did you ever hear that before? I don't like it. I don't like the word fake. It sets a wrong tenet. No, the word is, you act the way you want to feel. I'm not feeling greatest, so one of the things that I do is to start out being kind. When I bought gas in the morning, saying hello, being kind to the people I lead, until I get back into the kindness mode. Then I continue to be a doer and I trust and believe when I'm in that kindness mode that I'm loved beyond all measure, that I'm forgiven, but I also must ask for forgiveness and then let the kindness bubble up. This season causes us to remember and to remember this important issue. With kindness, we can we can salve the wounds of many, many people. The simple words, a simple card, a gesture, a song, all of those are kindnesses that, and a salve that helps heal those who are brokenhearted, those who have experienced something that is not good. Just this morning, I heard from my friend Simon, who used to come to this Mass, who now is in heaven. I'm sad. We lost our pastor in November. We've had a lot of sadness. But he would challenge us. Take it up. You feel it, and I'm not as kind or as helpful as I should be, but I'm going to work at it. I am not going to give in or give up because this kindness must be shared. And when I do that, I am living that we are, he is our God, we are his people. We understand that he forgives us and that he empowers us to do godly acts because kindness is a godly act. And where one act of kindness is, it will always fit. Don't save up your kindnesses. Use them and use them and use them. And you'll find out you'll never run out.